Hi, so um, you've either just taken your SPM results or you're still in Form 5 or maybe you've just taken your SPM. Alright, so in this video, we talk about the pathways you have after your SPM. If this is the first time you're meeting, thank you for viewing my video. Please subscribe to the channel and click like and also click the bell button so that you can get notifications. Alright. My name is Mr. Wee and I'm very passionate about students' academic and personal development. Alright, let's get straight into the pathways that you have after your SPM. I categorize it into three different things or three different routes that you can take. The first one will be public, second one private and third one work. What does it mean to go for the public route? If you go for the public route, that means your ultimate goal will be to go for a public university in Malaysia, namely UM, UKM, UPM, USM, UUM, UMS, Unimas, and a whole lot of other public universities run by the Malaysian government. The way that you go to these universities after Form 5 is to go to Form 6 or to go into public universities via routes called Asasi or matriculation. Asasi is the equivalent to the foundation programs in public universities. Uh, matric and matriculations are also the equivalent all right they are all at par foundation form 6 asasi matriculation all of these are at the same level if you go for the private route you go to a private university or college and you go for the, the foundation program then on to the degree or you, you go into the diploma then you can either opt to work when you complete your diploma or continue your studies into your degree level which is much encouraged. You can also take a certificate level programs, then go on to diploma and degree. This depends on your results for your SPM. All right. And the third one is work. You choose not to continue your studies. You're 17 years old. You say you want to you want to start working. You maybe will go to Singapore or you stay in Malaysia or you maybe go to another country and start working and you work for the rest of your life, uh, you start early in the workforce. Let's go into the pub public route. In the public route, you have Form 6. To go into the next level of education, you need to know what is the meaning of entry requirements. Entry requirements mean the minimum results that you need to get to go into the next level. What is the next level? Form 6, Foundation or Asasi, and Matriculation. This is for the public universities. For Form 6, usually they say you need to have a CGPA of 3.0 and you do not need to apply to go into Form 6. The schools that are offering for you Form 6 will send you a letter to offer you a place in the school. However, uh, just recently I read in, in the internet that there is a site under the Ministry of Education where you can check for your entry into Form 6 and you need to confirm your entry online so that your place is booked in the school. Check out this website that I'm posting in this video here right now. I'll also post the website in the descriptions of the video. Right, Asasi is also almost like foundation, but the difference between Asasi, matriculation and Form 6 is this. Form 6, you still study in your home state. You study in a school that offers Form 6. Whereas Asasi and matriculasi, you will go to a university and you will study in that university. Stay in the hostel for one year or one and a half years and experience university life straight away after Form 5. However, Asasi is usually for only those students who are, who are really, 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 really very smart and can handle very high pressure and heavy academic loads because in that one year, they will cramp a lot of credits, a lot of subjects that you need to study. And if you cannot maintain good results, then you either fail or you have to repeat. And then you have wasted your time already. Matriculation is the same, but matriculation, the entry requirements are a little bit more relaxed compared to Asasi. Asasi is for the high achievers, students that are good academically, that can really, really study with maximum number of subjects every semester all right so if you've got high numbers of a's and you don't want to go to form six you don't want to go to a private university you can try to apply for asasi to a local public university via the upu the entry requirements for asasi differs from one university to another university there's one university that requires as low as five b's 
okay, as low as five Bs, and another university requires a minimum requirement of as high as seven A's. Okay, minimum seven A's. So you need to go and look at the universities and check out their entry requirements for Asasi. Alright, so I would straight away go into UPU now and search for all this information about which universities have Asasi, about what the entry requirements are for Asasi and the deadlines to apply for Asasi in UPU. Alright, because you've got your results. If you've got your results now already, then it's time for you to look into all these things. This is of course if you have a goal, if you know what you want to do already. If you don't know what to do, then you are still unsure. You need to find that answer. Alright, you need to find that answer. But for now, I'm not going to talk about goal setting because I've talked about goal setting already in a previous video which you can watch later. That is about public, the public route from 6 Asasi Matriculasi or Matriculation. Private universities and colleges, it's a little bit easier. You need a minimum of 5 credits for you to go into a foundation program which is 1 year or if you have less than 5 credits, 3 credits will get you into a diploma program. Some of them offer diploma programs for 2 or 3 years. If you have less than 3 credits, you've got 2 credits, you can look for universities or colleges or institutes that offer certificate program that requires only 2 credits. If you have 5 credits or more, you can go for foundation. If you have less than 5 credits, your options are either the diploma if you have three credits or certificate two credits everything depends on your results as i mentioned just now working some of you might say i don't want to study anymore i just want to work right i want to work it might be a challenge for you getting jobs that you uh, you like at that age you might realize after one or two years of working that you need to continue your studies again and that is the time you need to uh, look at universities or colleges that will accept you into their programs other institutes of higher education are like polytechnics, community colleges, Institute Latihan Kemahiran. These are other options that you can look for as well if you are not too inclined academically. For those of you who may have failed BM or Sejarah, hopefully you haven't, but if you have, then it is important that you contact your school now immediately to find out when this thing called the SPM Ulangan is going to be held. The SPM Ulangan usually is for the BM paper and for the Sejarah paper. But maybe there are other subjects that are offered which I'm not too aware of. But find out the dates. Alright, if you think you are able to pass your BM in the next sitting for SPM Ulangan, then please register for that. Make sure you have private tutoring so that you can get practice for the BM paper and for the Sejarah paper. You do not want to fail that BM in Sejarah again. Because if you fail BM and Sejarah, you do not have an SPM cert. When you don't have an SPM cert, it's going to be very, very difficult for you in the future to do things. Alright, in Malaysia, the minimum certificate that is required is the SPM. For a lot of things that you will meet in the future. So, please, if you have not passed your BM or your Sejarah or both, then please refer to your school. Find out from your headmaster, from your Al Ewal Murid when the registration is for the SPM Ulangan. Hopefully you have not missed it. Right? If you have if you have missed it, then ask again when is the next registration for the next SPM Ulangan. You really, really please, you really need to get that BM and Sejarah so that you can get your SPM set. No matter what choice you have done, uh, you have taken, it's always up to you. You are the person that decides where you will be going after your SPM. Is it to Form 6? Is it to a, a public university via Asasi or Matriculasi? If your results is, are good, are you going into the private universities? No matter which path you choose, it's always all up to you. You are the one that decides whether you go to Form 6. You are the one that decides whether you go into the public university via the Asasi or Matriculasi route, depending whether you have very good results. You also decide whether you go into a private university or college via the diploma, via the foundation or the certificate, or whether you decide to work first. It's all up to you. Remember, whatever the decision, you have to own it. You have to own the decision that you make if you decide to go to Form 6, that means your ultimate motive is to go into a public university via the Form 6 route to go into UKM, University Malaya, University Putra Malaysia and do a degree program. If you want to get 
the program that you desire the if you want to study the program that you want to then your next goal is to make sure you get excellent results for your stpm because if you don't get excellent results for your stpm when you apply for upu in, to go into the public universities you might not get the course that you want if you couldn't get or if you can't get the courses that you want you have two options either you go with what is offered to you or you go into private education which means you're going to spend a lot of money now what is the difference between public and private universities most public universities that you go to or all public universities that you go to have a campus environment where you'll be able to stay in the you know in the university for usually the first semester sometimes the first year depending on how active you are in the university in co-curriculum in sports in the hostel committees you will probably get to prolong your stay you get to stay longer in the university if you don't stay in the university then you will not feel the life where a university student stays in the hostel for three years or for four years experience because if you stay in the hostel for three or four years the entire duration of your studies in the university you will experience a lot of activities a lot of developing yourself a lot of discovering yourself that is very that is precious that is something that you will never if you're active right get anywhere else with the little cost that you pay if you study in a public university if you go for private education let me just tell you just the foundation itself is already a five bigger fee just for the tuition fee this does not include all your other expenses the private education route is really a costly route if you compare it to from six and public universities but no matter what you decide i say it again it's all up to you you make decisions the things that you want to consider are your finance your parents or your family's financial situation are they able to support your studies for the entire duration if you go for public university from six three years degree or four years of degree five years of studies of rentals of life expenses compare make that calculation and compare that calculation to going to a foundation program in a private university for one year three years cost in a degree program compare that cost if you can bear the cost for the private university go for the private. if you can cannot bear the cost for the private university and you can afford to go to a public university then that's what you need to decide at the end of the day you want to be able to pay for your education all right you can apply for scholarships you can apply for loans or your parents can pay for it it's all up to you how you discuss with your parents and what your parents have planned no matter what your future think about it plan for it act towards it and always be prepared to adapt i wish you all the best good luck in this decision that you make thank you for watching and hope you make the right decision for yourselves if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments below and i'll try to answer them as soon as i see them once again good luck if you have gotten benefits from this video, hopefully you will subscribe, you will share the video, you will like the video. Thank you very much again.